everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Adventures of Gladriel. This time we're going to go to the West Continent. Yes, West Continent this time instead of the South with a whole other group. We have one returning player uh, along with a bunch of newer players. I am your humble DM, and if you would like to join us in conversation about this series or like to join another community, you can click in the description below to join the Pocket Dimension Discord. That's how I got all these players involved today. So, without further ado, we could have the players introduce themselves if they wish. Don't be shy now. <laughs> Hello, I'm Aulo. Nice to meet you all. All right. Is Hi. There... Uh, I'm Booty. Hello. Joey Wheeler here. Ready to rumble. It's nice to meet you all. Hello, I'll be Sharev. I'm the old man of the group. <laughs> hey there, I'm Notable. Um, good to be back. Alright, is that everyone? We didn't miss anyone? Cool. Alright, so... Where we last left off in the previous uh, game, that it, the sun was setting before that party went to town to complete their tasks. But, in the meantime, on another continent, more specifically in the left continent, the sun is setting, the day is about to take its rest. The left, the wet left continent, or the western continent, completely owned by Lady Gladria III, who has have gained most control over the continent, Many sought her affection in order to try to be the next king. However, many have failed to be up to her standards. Meanwhile, there is a swamp dragon creeping up territory in the north, spreading his swamps and his entire, well, being throughout the entire land. And now is slowly approaching the main water source of the land and threatens it currently. But our story takes place somewhere along the everlasting river. A magical river created by the gods to give a clean water source to all inhabitants and nature of this land. More specifically, we start at Lock Cutter's Ridge, where the sun is setting, the Red Guard is out guarding the entire town all around. And when we zoom in, we see a lone wanderer walking out of the forest see whose character this is as I roll randomly to determine oh. all right Alo, if you like to describe what your character looks like uh yeah sure uh I'm playing a uh, human woman she has a set of like just really old and rusted chainmail uh, she looks like she's where she has a really nice spear. It looks like it's melt maintained and polished very much in comparison to the old rusted uh, chainmail and uh, a shield that has many many nicks on it. She has like uh, auburn uh, brownish red hair uh, that's tied into like one long uh, braid uh, to try to keep it out of her face as she walks. Uh, and she has, like, a little pet crow uh, that she's currently feeding a piece of jerky. All right. So, uh, Alo, your character, the sun is setting. You know that the night is a very dangerous place to be, especially alone. And you see this town, which you know is Lock Cutter's Ridge, along your journey. And you see a bunch of the Red Guard. You know that the Red Guard are basically, you know, a militant group that hires others for services. Ooh, I'm echoing off of someone. Um, that is basically town guard for hire, and they are all worship the god of war and strength, Ivor. But they're not like warmonger or anything to just offer their services to those who need it. And one of them calls out to you, Excuse me, miss! Do you got anywhere to go for the night? If not, you could stay in this town before we secure it. 
I mean, that was the plan. Very well. Come closer. Uh, at this point, I you can move your to token. Approach. Yep. Hmm? So you can move your token at this point. Okay. All right. You approach the guard who is wielding a war axe, similar attire to what you're currently seeing right now. And the emblem on their shoulders is the symbol of Ivor, which is a dog's head with crossed arrows behind it. And the guard says, Well, miss, if you're looking for a good rest, I recommend trying to find, as I look through my notes, <laughs> I recommend you go to the Lumberjack's Tavern. Yes, there'll be Lumberjacks in there if you wish to speak with them, but it's probably the best bet for outsiders. All right. Uh, thanks for the advice. Um, is there any particular reason you are all stationed here? I thought you guys were usually uh, only in time of need. Well, war time is over, and of course there's some leftover w soldiers from the war that still wish to walk, so... We dedicate our time to protecting towns who need it, especially this town. Oh, it seems like another player has joined us. Uh, has there been an uptick in creatures nearby? Oh, Coke is in. So, um, is Coke in this game? Uh, no. So, Coke, if you don't mind just leaving for this thing because it's kind of messing up the stream. But you can watch on the Twitch link. I posted it on the chat. Sorry, some player interference there. But we'll continue. <laughs> it's what happens when you're running three campaigns. So um, he directs you, says, you're going to find a Loverjack's Tavern right over here. And he points it to this two-story building over here. Hi. Well, I'll be on my way. I'll just walk past them and then go to the tavern. All righty. So then we transition over to the Loverjack's Tavern. You go in, and there is, well, you see this as the lights begin to adjust. You see what seems like to be a group of the Red Guard chilling at this table here, just having some ale. Seems like they just recently got off their ship. Other than that, you do see what seems like a bunch of lumberjacks hanging around the bar, just talking. You see two more other Red Guard guards around in the north. You also mm -hmm. see, seems like four men playing a, ga a card game of sorts. You also see two women talking, gossiping. You see two old merchants discussing some kind of business. Other than that, you do see like a worrying lady nearby the fireplace. You see a bard around the upper left corner playing some, well, Spanish, calm, calm Spanish music. And other than that, you do also see what seems like to be someone in a black, in a brown overcoat with a hat on the side having some ale. You also see this half orc monk drinking some tea, minding their own business. And we also see what seems like to be a Kenku, a small one, speaking and conversing with what seems like to be a purple lizard folk. At this time, what would you like to do? Um, I think what I would do is like go up to the bar and order um some soup, bread, and a little bit of ale because it's been a little while since i've gotten to sit down in a tavern fair enough you go up to the bar um you do see this gentleman right over here and we'll get to him in just a second um the man behind the counter seems like to be the innkeeper a purchase says ah good evening ma'am what can i get you to eat drink maybe a room uh yeah i will definitely need a room for tonight but also some uh any stew, bread, and ale would be nice. Oh, sure. I could definitely cook that up. So if you wish to have a room and all that, that'll be about five, that'll be about one gold piece for the room and a total of three silver for your meal. Ah, quite pricey out here, but fair enough. Uh, and I'll go ahead and pay the man. All right. You pay the man. He takes your coin. He says, very well. I'll be right back. The kitchen's out in the back. He speaks to his wife a little bit and before taking his leave to the back. Um, notable, if you would like to describe what your character looks like. Alrighty. I am playing Wildfire. Uh, he is wearing what seems to be a modified set of torn and worn night scouting gear made out of pure leather. 
the only missing piece would be the helmet that they wear, but that can be replaced with a brim hat that covers his eye and a bandana he ties over his lower face. Most of the gear that he has is enclosed by a ragged brown overcoat, and on his back is this massive cro crossbow with a lot of steel components. And uh, hanging on its sides that are slight, slightly concealed by the overcoat are two smaller crossbows. Uh, he's got a piece of straw in his mouth that he fiddles with every once in a while, and he kind of eyes the other person suspiciously. He seems to be the mysterious half. All right. So as you are minding your own business, you notice this female warrior seems to be approached. You haven't really seen that much woman fighters in a while, and it seems like she's taking a spot near you. Do you do anything to interact, or not really? Look at your side and say, well, howdy there. You don't look to be around these parts. That gear screams it. It's because I'm not. Well, then what brings you all the way to these places? What, I mean, what does anything take a warrior to do? I'm looking to kill shit. Well, earn some money, for the most part. Hey, you How about yourself? Us? I ain't too fond of killing, but if I have to, I will. As long as someone pays me enough. Besides that, I heard there was some archery going on. Figured I could learn something about it here. Maybe get some quick cash out of it. It's always a fair assumption. You by yourself? Oh, been a lone traveler since I got all this gig, so... Yep. Yourself? Uh, unfortunately so. It's always nicer to have someone watch your back, but right now I only have Rufus, and then I, like, reach up and, like, pet underneath my crow's chin. Uh, wish I could relate to that. I work alone nowadays. Can't really trust those yellow belly backstabbers anymore. I always preferred stabbing from the front. I'm not very stealthy. <laughs> oh. That one got me. What's your name? Uh, I'm Marina. How about you? Uh, go by a lot of names around these parts. Yellow Belly, Ace High, Troublemaker, No Good Thief. I prefer the name Wildfire, though. Okay, but what's like a reasonable name for me to call you? Wildfire. Fuck it. Fine. Sure, I'll accept that. <laughs> nice to meet you, Wildfire. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right. At this point in time, the innkeeper comes back from the bag and says, All right, ma'am, I got your food right over here. Um, one of these log cutters, like, bumps into one another and almost trips this way. It's like, hey, you drunk, you better watch where you're going. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Phyllis, I'm sorry. He's like, yeah, you better be sorry. He, he goes around the corner and says, lucky I don't knock your ass out, as he whispers his breath underneath. He says, here you go, ma'am. Drops the food nearby you. And he says, can I get you anything else? No, I'm good for now. Uh, maybe my uh, friend here, Wildfire, a drink. Oh, well, very well. You got two copper? Yeah, I'll give him two copper. Very well. And then he goes to the bar to prepare a drink. Um, while you two are talking, you do notice like this weird, out-of-place man around the corner, studying notes, looking a bit off. He hasn't really ordered anything in a while. Um, so, if you would like to describe what your character looks like, Jago. 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 Um, kind of brawny looking man, uh, long, kind of thinning hair, looks a little greasy, unkempt. Um, wearing a, kind of a long coat, uh, white, going to the floor, kind of, uh, resting around the floor a little bit. Um, broken glasses and a backpack held tight uh, around his coat. I'm carrying a lot of supplies and the sort. I'm just sitting there, kind of uh, looking around, uh, just inspecting my surroundings as if I'm waiting for something. Okay. So, Marina and Wildfire, you two notice this strange character occasionally looking around, but paying attention to his notes and anything. At this point, Phyllis comes up and says, Here you go, sir. Courtesy of the lady. And then he pushed his drink towards you and you catch it. He's gonna tip his brim pad. Thank you kindly, sir. Alright. And 
while that's going on, um, if Yach and let's see, if Yach and Cuz would like to describe what their characters look like as you two are currently engaging in conversation, as you two seem to be the weird people, um, the only like non-humanoid looking people in the tavern. If you guys would like to describe your characters. Uh, first, yeah. So, um, uh, Raylan mm -hmm. is uh, a Kanku, a very small Kanku, as mentioned earlier. Uh, he likes to keep himself uh, very well kept um, uh, to maintain his appearances. His a uh, he tends to wear uh, light leather armor with straps. He's um, black from head to toe, but on his side he holds a dagger and a short bow and a short sword and seems to be and is a type of guy that likes to joke around with uh non-humanoids around him all right and then sharif if you like to describe what your character looks like sharif is a massive over 300 pounds of muscle uh, purple scale lizard cub he barely wear any clothing mm -hmm. Most likely was sent by the guards to have some on him when he got into the uh, into the town. He, he has at his belt two small hatchets that seems to be made out of stone, and a very very big stick on his side that looks like a so, somewhat a hammer. He most likely is interested in the in the small uh, in the small bird because he never saw one before. And want to know um, what's going on with him. All right. So, what conversation are you two having at this point? Oh, as he approached, as he approached me earlier, I asked him, "Can I help you?" Well, you 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 do look like something I never saw before. Well, you're certainly big yourself. Well, yeah, but you're very small. Is that a problem? Well, no, but you look like a good guy. Do you know if this if they sell frog meat here? I have no idea. I'm pretty new to these parts as well. I obviously can't uh, eat or drink all that much considering I'm that small, but <laughs> I like to believe I have some pretty good skills about me. That's good. What kind of skill? Well, Are you a good hunter? Well, I... I kind of, uh, whether it's good or not, I kind of fit into maybe what you've heard of around here with Kankus. What have you heard? Well, I haven't Avoid... heard much. Oh, yeah. well, I'll, I'll let you know what it's like then. <laughs> uh, I, uh, my people typically have, uh, how should I say this lightly, a tendency towards crime, but I'm not that type of person. But I do know and have the same skills, so I'm very good at, for example, mimicking voices. I that too with ogres. <laughs> yeah, I, can, if... I, I can mimic them before hitting them in the back of the head. Do you like hitting people in the back of the head often? <laughs> well, o o only if the tribe need meat. Fair enough. Fair enough. You said tribe. Where where exactly is your tribe? It, in the swamp on the uh, on the east side of the continent. Ah, I see. I see. I'm more of a country boy myself. Oh. <laughs> Alright. As you two are engaging in conversation, um, Cray, if you'd like to describe what your character looks like as you are hearing this conversation between two sh animal looking creatures as you are sipping on your tea. Alright. Uh, Cray is a rather tall half orc with longer, unkempt black hair and a tattoo going up his left arm and shoulder. He doesn't wear much armor besides his left uh, leather gauntlet and waist armor. He mostly just wears uh, pants and straps along his body, along with his quarter step he holds on his back with a strap to his body. Alrighty. So what are you doing while you're sipping on this team? Do you interact with anyone or are you just minding your own business? Minding my own business, kind of just staring off into the... Listening to the music and all. Okay. The music is 
that of light Spanish music, acoustic music, of course. Um, this woman coming from the nearby the fireplace, looking a bit distressed and worried. Um, looking all around, she clearly is in need of help, and she comes up to you, the three of you. She says, "Um, excuse me, um, guys, or sorry if I interrupt on all three of you, but um, I was wondering if." You guys could assist me in something? How can we help you today, ma'am? Oh, well, you we have people? Oh, well, I see. Well, my husband, he he's one of the log cutters uh, that help export lumber from this town. But anyways, he went out to do his daily log cutting routines, and he hasn't really make it back. And I'm quite worried of what happened to him. I was wondering... You three and maybe a bunch of other people that I could probably help out could assist. Uh, I, I could pay you if you accept that. To give me food? If food? I, I could give you food. That's shouldn't be an issue. That's a deal. No, no. He, he's pretty big, man. Uh, the, shouldn't be a problem getting food. Um, and do you two accept food or do you accept like what do you accept as payment? I'm, 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 I haven't really food. done this before. Just some gold will do for me. Uh, okay. Um, would you mind just waiting here while I try to go find others? So that may, that could probably assist me. That could probably assist you guys as well. Help never hurts, but pay will better be well. Uh, okay. Let, oh, little one, here. are you good to track people? Uh, I'll be right back, she says. And she continues to go around the tavern. Um, she looks around and Zargo, seeing that you're probably one of the smartest people look-wise in the group, even though you're kind of looking mad right now, um, you are scarcely approached. She says, I'm um, scarcely sorry to disturb you, sir. Why, oh, yes. What would you need? Um, I was wondering if you could help me find my husband. I'm trying to get a group together to try to go and find him. Uh, I could pay you if you are interested. Well, find him where? Where has he wandered off to? Well, he's one of the log cutters, and he went out to his daily routines, but he has to make it back home. I was wondering if you and maybe a couple of others could go and find him. So, out cutting wood, uh... No problem, actually. Uh, I take money. I like that. The shiny stuff. Uh, yes, I, I can pay you. Um, She points over to the three t three of the group nearby. Um, I also told them, and they would be able to assist them. So if you want, you can just join them, maybe converse with them a bit while I try to go find others throughout that could assist me. I consider myself quite the sociable, so... You go do your thing, I'll be right with them. Sure, Thank and you. I'll be right back as well. And then she leaves you. She tries to um, act, ask the guard, but the guard seems to pay no attention. She asks the fellow law cutters, but they're too drunk to understand. She then goes and asks the four uh, guys with the poker game, but they seem to be too busy in their poker uh, game. And then she goes up to... Both you, Wildfire, and you, Marina, says, Excuse me, guys. Um, sorry to disturb you of your meal and drink, but I was wondering if you could assist me with something? Um, what is it? Well, a pretty vague question. Well, see, my husband, he's one of the lock cutters in the city, and he hasn't make it back in quite some time, and I was trying to get a group together to see if maybe you could go out and find him. I, I could pay you guys. Yeah, sure. Um, how about you, Wildfire? No, Wildfire was not listening up until he heard pay. Then he uh, <laughs> jumped. What? You got money? I got guns. Let's move. Uh, all right. Well, all right. before all that, uh, where was he located? Um, I could explain. Here, come and follow me. Um, first I gotta I get some. One second. I pick up my bowl and just so I can chug the rest of the soup and start sure. chewing as I wipe my mouth and follow her. Sure. She says, I'll join you right shortly. I just gotta get some food for um, the lizard guy over there. I'll be right with you shortly. And then she goes up to the barkeep and tries to order some food. And you two can move your tokens closer to the table, if you wish. 
ah, damn, I was going to get to that chair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> stand and I just look at the green you guys, guy. You guys pull two chairs from this opposite table here and join them. And you yeah. are all grouped together, just a weird couple group of strangers. You guys can roleplay with one another if you wish. Alright, so who are all of you bots? <laughs> it's a great well, brisk greeting. <laughs> Not polite one, are you? No. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Your name being? Uh, Marina. Hey. This is Rufus. Rufus, more nice to meet both of you. And the rest of you? Pointing to the rest of the table, kind of. Wait, you didn't say your name first. first. <laughs> I said, oh, fuck me. My name's Raylan. How are you doing, Marina? And what's your name again? Yo, Cray. Nice. You look very, uh, intimidating with that mask on. Oh. Me? Yeah. I don't <laughs> typically uh, get the best receptions, and I'm very small when it comes to around humans, so you're very big like you're my lizard friend over here. <laughs> uh, you know, Mama fed me right. Uh, I feel like I understand not getting the best reception. I relate to that. But, uh, name's Wildfire. Nice to meet you, Wildfire. My name's Raylan. I'm not that big. I'm among the small one in the tribe. It's okay. I like to believe I can make it up with attitude and intelligence. Right. At this point, while you guys are talking amongst each other, you see the woman who approached you all earlier. Um, she tries to go up to the guard, try to say some stuff, but they're too occupied. And then re she recognizes that the two gentlemen in the area are merchants, so she knows that they'll probably not help. And then she'll go over to you, um, Shariv, with a plate of a full chicken along with some um, potatoes and some greens. She says, oh, here, here's your food that I promised you. And she uh, hands you the plate. Food. Nice food. All right. The lady, all right. the lady continues saying, well, sorry to disturb your evenings. And I know like the, doing this favor for me takes a lot. Um, I am Abigail. Um, so as far as payments, um, I don't have coin per se, but I do have this. And then she takes off what seems like to be a golden necklace that has, seems like to be covered in jewels, a very expensive one. So it's kind of weird that she would have a necklace like that around these parts. She says, this was given to me by... My grandmother many, many years ago. She says it's worth a lot of money. She places this down on the table for you, all you guys to inspect. She says, this could go for a lot of gold pieces, at least 400. I figured you guys could take this as payment. You could bring it to a trader or something, and they'll give you a coin and then split it that way. Other than that, I only have a few remaining gold just to live off of. But if you guys accept this job, I could give you this as payment. And she places the necklace down on the table. All right. Uh, Ray's gonna pick it up and kind of inspect the craftsmanship. It's so she's rather nicely made. I feel it could give us a pretty penny if it goes for maximum price. Yeah. You look at it, Cray, and you see that it is gold, and you tell it's from at least. 75 to maybe even 100 years ago as far as like the craftsmanship goes it's and your surprise is like in this well condition so you are confident that this could fetch you a pretty penny yeah right, what well, you did your grandma you just some heirloom or is just something she found i'm not, would you i'm not too sure my grandmother owned it and then when i got married she gave it to me as a wedding gift well i do say it's a rather good necklace Thank, as thank a you. Smith, my sir, I do say that I would be proud to take this as a reward of any sort. Uh, of course, and Grant. of course, you guys could just take it to a jeweler and, you know, separate the value amongst you all, and 
that could be your guys' form of payments. I don't really have much else to offer, unfortunately. Unless you want food. And then she gestures towards the lizard folk who is at this point eating half of the chicken. <laughs> me. You got my then, word. Uh, uh, honestly, this payment seems for more than enough for me. Uh, typically, when somebody says payment, I'm expecting gold, silver, hell, some copper, but. Big guy fair, here, that is gold. <laughs> yeah, big guy here seems to be the crafty type, so I'll trust your say on it. Uh, all right, uh, then she'll ask for the necklace back, Craig. Would like to, Raylan would like to ask Abigail, uh, what's your grandmother's name, per chance? <laughs> Putting the DM on the spot, huh? <laughs> uh, I mean, there's this big old fancy. Uh, necklace that we have here, and it would be nice to. My grandmother's see name was hands. Samantha. She, according to her, she used to be royalty, but she tells a lot of stories. But the story of how she got the necklace, well, her, my grandfather, gave it to her, and as a gift, or so she says. But recently, before her passing, she has been forgetful at times. Interesting. Very interesting. Thank you, Abigail. Of course. Uh, I'm assuming you give the necklace back, correct? Yes. Alright, so she takes the necklace, she puts it back on, and then she conceals it. It's just so that no one else was, like, watching, because it's a lot of money. She says, well, the la you guys could, well, you guys just let me know if you ever see him. And as far as description, let me just refer to my notes real quick. He, it, he, she gives a description. She, he looks like a lock cutter. However, the sides of his head are, well, shaved off, and he has orange hair and with an orange beard, and he should stand out amongst the rest of the group. Most of them look like them over there. And she gestures to the drunken lock cutters, who at this point are just laughing, annoyingly, at the bar keep, bar table. So he should be easy to point out. He doesn't have a beard like a lumberjack yet, but he's trying to grow it. His, his name is Samuel. Samuel. Okay. Did you did you doge the direction he went in for a chance? He went eastward towards the Oakland Forest. I don't know where specifically. If you go to the Lock Cutters docks, maybe you could find some there or if for some reason you make these four sober, and she point gestures to the lock cutters who at this point are just slapping each other in the face, playing some weird game. Uh, she says, unless you get those guys sober, then, you know, maybe they might know the proper direction of where he's at. No, Roy. Appreciate the info. Well, listen, I, I, I appreciate you guys doing this. I, I really, really do. And if you find him, just meet me here in the tavern. I don't got much else to do other than to talk with everyone else and occasionally shop here and there, but just let me know when he comes back and thank you once again. And then she will leave. She'll leave the tavern. What does summer what does summer mean? What does you guys summer mean? Yes. What does summer mean? It means not drunk. What is drunk? <laughs> you see, you see those motherfuckers page. over there? I mean, yes. Point. Raylan, They're drunk. Raylan, 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 oops, sorry. Points at these dudes. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone these points dudes. at the log cutters. <laughs> you see dudes. how they're slurring their words and falling over each other like idiots? That's drunk. That's what, there's this thing called alcohol, my man. Right. One of the I would be uh, one very of the... interested to see how much you could drink. Me too, honestly. You want to bet on it? One of the log no. cutters drunkenly stoops up to uh, Shariz, and he's like, "Hey, you! You look weird. Why are you purple?" I, I'll grab him uh, around the neck and say, "Ah, a hey, friend." Want a summer hop? Oh. My, my friend, my friend they, they don't like it when you grab him by the neck. Trust me. The, <laughs> the guard approaches and says, Hey, you guys better cut that off. We're not going to have any fighting here. I'm not fighting. I want to sober them up. 
<laughs> no, no, no. Put it down. Just let okay. go. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I let this go. Damn. All right, look, look. They're going to be sober by the morning. You don't got to do anything. Right now, let's just focus on what the fuck we're paid to do. All right? Okay. All Ugh. right, well, shape up all of you. Come on, let's start heading out. At this po at this point, you let go, and the drunk goes, Hey, why did you just stop him? He, he had me at the throat. And then the guard's like, Shut up, you drunk. How about you get the hell out of this tavern? And then he tries to start some issues, and then his boys try to come over, and it seems like a commotion might start between the law cutters and the red guard. And then the boys over here will march over there to try to de-escalate the situation. Raylan uh, talks to his mates and recommends that he we get out of here before things get ugly. It, not our problems. Oh, we... sure, it's rather mighty fine plan. I don't want to be here when that happens. <laughs> the guard at this point says, Hey, you four knock it off. You need help, guys? Yeah, I think we might ha need help getting those drunks out. But Phyllis, you want them to stay or you want them kicked out? Phyllis goes up to the counter and says, Yeah, get them the hell out of here. They're causing issues. And then the locker is like, oh, come on, man. We fill logs for your tavern and stuff like that. You guys could move your tokens as it seems like this situation. Yeah, I'm just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All right. This has a big old fat not my problem written on it. All right. It's too small right. to care about this. Let's transition to back to the map here. Um, we'll zoom back in. We'll remove Marina's token for now. And now I'll just put a default token to represent the entire party, assuming you guys are all going together. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Alright, so right yes. now, you guys are getting out of the tavern. Um, you do realize that most of the shops and that would be available are all closed at this point. You start to hear like a bar fight going on in the tavern. Um, oh. But nonetheless... That sounds wonderful. But nonetheless, the sun is just about to set and it's about to be dark. What do you guys do? Uh through my backpack. Yep, I got torches. How many of you fucks can see in the dark? Oh, I can. I cannot. I wish. I cannot yeah, I see can. in the dark, but I have a torch as well, I believe. Alright, well, you're gonna be the one wielding it then, since my hands are full. And then just smudge into the shield and spear. <laughs> stay close to me, because I can't see shit in the dark. <laughs> Don't worry, I will stay right next to you. I'm very small, and I do not like to pick fights if I can. Alright. Alright. Where do you guys go? The, the nice lady said that uh, the, the, the docks could have info. Alright, let's go check. Or the us then went to the forest. Is there one of you that good at tracking stuff? Um, I wouldn't brush my track. I ain't worried. Go to directions. I'm okay at tracking things, but I wouldn't say I'm great. Uh, I'm alright, but wouldn't say I'm great either. That is not my forte. Yeah. Alright. Well, let's head over to the log cutter stock then. See if right. we can get any information on Samuel. Yep. Sounds, sounds right. right. You guys that go. That is what Abigail said. You guys go to the lock cutter's dock. As I transition you guys over to the lock cutter's dock. Um, if I find it. I have multiple maps, so I'm trying to find the correct one. Here you go. Yeah. I shall place your guys' tokens in a second. Um, where is it? Luckily... You, you think the nice lady will give me more food once we've finished? <laughs> Probably. Oh, yeah. With the amount of gold that necklace you made of, you feel the buy all the food yourself. Unless you don't want to cut off that. Don't forget we're splitting it six way, partner. All right. oh, obviously. You guys all approach. You see that there are campfires lit. It doesn't look like lit in this picture, but they are lit. A campfire here, and this one seems to be dying down as those three seems to secure some logs before eventually going back to their seats. Other than that, you do see like these four tents. You see two piles of logs that seem to be fully secured and wrapped. Do you see this large tent? A dock. Seems like someone like looking at the dock, just fishing. And mm -hmm. that's what you guys see. So what do you guys like to do? I'm just gonna approach the first logger I see. Hey! <laughs> the two log carters over by the campfire, there seem to be 
like eating some sausage that is just cooked off the fire and they turn to see um you lot um they're like oh hey how's it going miss um, you need any help would you like to join some fire would you like some of this sausage nah. yes nah, please i'm good sure come over here big man I, I, I'm just asking, seeing if any of you people have seen a uh, scraggly ass beard fuck named Samuel. He, he, the lock cutter gives you a sausage on a stick and says, Here you go. And he says, Hmm, Samuel. Hey, Fred, have you ever heard of Samuel? Hmm. Yeah, he's one of the newer lock cutters, you know. He's the one with the orange beard and the orange hair. Ah, yes, that guy. So, if you wish to find him, most likely you're going to find at the regular log cutters camp. It's east. Let me see. Hmm. Not really good with directions. It's definitely in the Oakland Forest. I would say it's more east. And then you're going to keep going east until you see a, the path curve. And then you're going to go up. And then at that point, you should see like a big log cutters camp. There'll be some red guard over there. Oh, red guard. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'll ask the red guard in the city uh, for better directions if I can't find it. Oh, yeah, sure. They know a little bit more about directions than us. We just lock cutters, so. Valid. At, okay. this, at this point, you eat it in, like, two bites. And he's like, would you like another one, friend? No. No, I'll be paid with food later. All but right. Thank you. Of course. And um, and he gestures to like everyone who is kind of like spreading out doing thing. Those guys with you? Yeah, they yes. are. All right. What do the rest of you do while this conversation is going on? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go talk to the other people on the other side of the camp. Three of them. Sure. Right. I was with these. Uh, with my, with uh, Sharif and Marina uh, and uh, Marina. All right. The law critter says, "Oh." Seems like you got a Kenku. I've never seen one. I've heard about them, but I've never seen one before. Hey. Well, he smell. Hmm. Who doesn't smell nowadays? <laughs> and what are you doing, Jizako? He's going to approach the man on the pier, ask him a couple questions. Sure. So you and Wildfire, I guess, join unless you want to ask at a di weird distance but we'll go over to you two so you see this man fishing and he turns and he's like oh you guys scare me i thought you were gonna push me in for a second as he continues fishing so what do you need you guys need any help or anything like that oh i just had a question um the forest you know the forest the one you cut wood in and all that um any dangers monsters uh strange things uh Anything I'd like to know if I were to happen to walk over there real quick? Or... Well, there's a bunch of dangers. You got different tribes, some orc tribes. I think there's a lizard folk tribe somewhere amongst there. Some wood elves. Other than that, if you don't reach the villages, um, obviously you have our camp where we're cutting wood at. Um, other than that, I've been hearing some weird things have been happening at our camp. Some bugs infesting some large ones but i never seen anything like that i think those are just the guys telling stories anything more about these stories you can tell me i'm a little bit intrigued hmm. well can't really say much other than that really i've just been oh. here at the docks just loading the logs and just making sure that they are successfully on their way Simple life. It must be fun. You don't ever go into the danger, the forest. Why would I want to do that? More fun than loading logs, I'm going to be honest, my friend. <sighs> but thank you. As I turn around and I start walking away back toward the, you know, greater mass of people. All right. You turn around and you see your half orc companion with the, just like, boom, kind of almost scaring you a bit. Is a oh, excuse me, friend, as I walk past him. Alrighty. So eventually, you guys all rejoin, I presume? Sure. Alright. And as you guys 
So it's up to you guys whether you guys wish to travel now, wait, or whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, fuck it, let's head out. Quicker we get paid, quicker I can get out of here. Where you gotta go, that's so important. Wherever the money brings me. They, they said east. Let's go, let's go towards the east. And yeah. let, let's stop at town to ask where they, where, where that camp thing is. Yeah, sure. Back to town, right? Alright. Alright. You guys all leave the lock cutter's dock at this point. So you, this token represents all of you. So what would you guys like to do? We we will I'm go towards the it. town. Um, you you said there were guards that were like outside. Yep, there's guards securing outside at this point. Each of them having like a tall. It seems like it'd be a tall torch that they seem to be mounted to the ground, so they have full visual coverage around so, their immediate well, area. So, what we'll do, we'll ask them direction for the woodcutter camp. Alrighty. They are supposed to know, and then I assume we'll all go towards said camp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. You go ask the guard. Um, you guys can role play. Who's gonna speak to the guard? All of you, or one of you? <laughs> Sure, uh, excuse me, Redgar. Yeah, where's, how can I help you guys? Where, where's the log cutter's camp, for chance? We're trying to find a friend. What was his name? I can't quite remember, actually. We're trying to Samuel. find a camp. Samuel, yes. Appreciate it. Samuel, it is. And we need to find this camp to learn more about him. Do you know anything of the shore? Oh, yeah, that camp, it's more eastward. They're going to just follow the path, and usually the path divots, but you're just going to keep going straight. Eventually, you'll see some more red guard guarding the lock cutter's camp, and should be easy to spot. We'll have torches similar like this as he gestures towards the torch. All right. Anything we need to look out for on our way there, anything dangerous that we may have to keep our eye out? It's getting dark. Well, maybe some bears. Other than that, maybe some, like, snakes and what have you, but... Other than out of the order, I've heard some, like, strange bugs being around recently, but I don't know whether that's true or not. Bugs. Do you know what type of bugs? Any, like a mosquito, or... I'm not too sure. Should be... He looks at the rest of her and says, Nothing you guys sh should be able to handle. Alright, then. I guess that should be enough. Eastward again, right? Yes, and he points to the general direction. You're going to take the path. He, he gestures towards this way. You're going to keep going straight. You're going to keep going straight till you see these torches. And he points to the tall torch planted at the ground. He says, once you find that, you'll find the camp. All right, you should keep going straight, camp. Got it. Yep. Appreciate it. All, all right. right. I think that's all we need, then. Good luck. Anyone else you need to ask on it? <laughs> all right, and I'm following him. Sounds like he knows where he's going. All right. All right. Yeah, fine. Well, I hope you find your friend and uh, stay safe. You do. We'll all be on our way then. All right. And you guys continue the path onward as we transition into the path, uh, which is this. I'll place your character token right over. I'm trying to get used to this because they added some new software here. Boom. Here's your guys' characters. I got to make Re Raylan's token a bit smaller, though. There we go. <laughs> small boy. I am the small one. All right. You guys can role play on your way there as you guys are traversing. Some of you guys have lit torches, so you can see immediately around your area. You hear the nighttime critters up and about, but you guys are just taking the path. So you guys can role play if you so desire to. The red guard said if we just keep going straight from here, we all eventually see those torches that they uh, were holding there, so. You know, that'll be a rather straightforward thing, though bears are concerned. Yeah, sounds about right. But, uh, we've got a concern here. Second yeah. time I've heard about them bugs around base bar. Say, Mariner, you think your feathered friend right there got a taste for him? Uh, which one are you talking about? And I point to room. the torch for me. Uh, I guess I could be talking about both, but I don't want to be rude. 
is a rude to ask for food preferences? Mr. Kind of bird, man. You like eating bugs? <laughs> he just says very bluntly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Relin there? Uh-oh. He might not be at his mic right now. What, Rel? Well, as Wait. for me, I do love uh, giant oh, no, sense I am at my meat. mic. I just forgot to unmute it. It's all good. It happens. Oh. I uh, do not like, actually, uh, bugs, but uh, I'm sure her uh, feathered friend over there would certainly love it. So please direct them her way, not mine. I mean, I tend to eat them, but Rufus doesn't. He's way pickier than I am. I can respect that, honestly. Yeah, he's a fancy guy. Now, with these bugs... I have a bit of a question. Does anyone feel comfortable uh, trying to look around? I mean, I know we have some torches, but I don't sure. think we should just keep walking, not knowing what we're doing in the dark. I mean, sure. Uh, I'll like do. I'll go ahead and like look near the like trees and stuff to see if like there's any particular claw marks or anything like we're entering sure. any animal's territory. Sure. Make a perception check. The first roll of the game. Sure. Yeah, yeet. Uh, just uh, unnatural 20. Alright. Um, you do see what seems like to be like a small fox seem to be like killing a squirrel and then seeing you guys and then running away with it. But other than that, as far as your immediate surroundings, that's all you really see other than like, you know, some bugs as far as like grasshoppers or you hear like, you know, those crickets at night. Hmm. Uh, as far as I can tell, just foxes. Nothing dangerous. It is most strange that they're bringing up fox, eh? They say it's just a rumor, but I fear if it was just a rumor, he would be dead by now. Let's stop just guessing it. I don't know. I don't, like, when I was a kid, there was a rumor there was a shadow in the woods for, like, 16, 17 years till people just stopped talking about it. You'd be surprised how often rumors end up to be rooted in fact. I wouldn't, but, you know. It must be something, maybe some sort of illness to spread into me, but I can't be too sure. They give me no information on the bug. Ew. I mean, if it's a bug, we'll just kill it. It's fine. Yes, I can still shoot it, and if I can shoot it, we'll be a-okay. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. I'm sure we can keep going, then. All right. You guys continue onward as you guys continue to follow the path. As you guys continue to follow the path, as you get towards the edge, you do see what seems like to be two torches lit up in the distance. And as it does, all of a sudden, you guys see an airhead being placed right in front of you. And you're like, hey, stay right where you are. Yeah, I'm here. What the fuck? Stay where we are. Who are you guys? We're just some concerned citizens looking for one of our fellow friends. Not Samuel. Yes, yeah, Samuel. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Uh, three? <laughs> three? <laughs> Are we all rolling pers uh, persuasion? Yep, I would give you all persuasion. So. Hmm. All of us? Okay. Yeah, because like, yeah. you're all wow. talking to one another. Wow. All right, so... 11? <laughs> okay. 5? 5? Oh. 19. 19. Oh, 19. There, we go. 19. 19. there we go. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> we're, look we're looking for a fellow with a fire beard. Mm -hmm. um, at, this at this point, when you see a red guard approaching, you're like, like you're looking for a friend, huh? Carrying a torch. Yeah. Hmm. Well, come with me. It's best you stay at the camp. It's not safe out here. Come. And then you guys follow the guard into camp. All right. So, uh, let me just put your characters here. Wa bam. Shrink Relin a bit. It's gonna be a, probably a theme as I group all your tokens all the time. So, <laughs> gonna be a funny one though. Um. So the guard says, "Guys, they're looking for a friend." And. Well, I guess they could use the rest for tonight. They're like, hmm, very well if you say so. 
And then they put down their bows, and then they let you pass. He says, you are welcome to stay, but if you have your own tent, you guys can set it up. Otherwise, if any of the lock cutters would like to share tents, um, that's welcome too. Just don't do anything suspicious, and then they'll let you in. Define suspicious. Try not to steal shit, fight shit, start shit. You know, that shit. Damn, have your arrow back. All right. Like to walk up to one of the guards and ask them uh, before we uh, settle for the night we heard a lot of rumors about these very big bugs have you heard anything about that yeah these weird bug things they seem to be coming from the ground they seem to have like long piercing claws that are about as tall as well me and he's kind of like about 5 11 almost six feet he's like they're almost as tall as me and um, they're little bastards. Sometimes they pop in and out, but they haven't appeared around the camp, so you'll be safe. Mainly, probably around the outskirts. Cool. Thank you so much. Don't sound too much like a rumor anymore. It sounds like an active threat. All right. You guys are free to explore. Yeah. I'll just walk up to the closest group of loggers, just like, hey. Someone named Samuel here. Uh, you two, you see these two, like, they, they're, they like, talking. Good story, like, hmm, Samuel? Hmm. He hasn't really made it back guy. to camp, huh? Hmm. Yeah, Quite strange. Yeah, guy, orange hair. Hmm, I think it, I know who you're talking about. Um, he probably went off, like, a day ago. There is, like, another separate area that they're trying to set camp to go further down the forest. Uh, maybe my captain would know. He's right over there, and he points to, like, this guy around the corner. Ask him. He'll probably know a lot more of where they specifically went. Alright, thank you. <laughs> just uh, start walking over to him. Alright, Law of Fire, what would you like to do? I'm just gonna follow. Uh, right. Kind of touch Marina and say, Seems like a wild goose chase. I mean, yeah, but it always are. It's a fucking, you know, find and rescue. The guy is probably dead. But we get paid either way, so. Yeah. You, you see... know, I like what you think. <laughs> Everybody does. You got, being smart. You guys hear these two lock cutters singing a song with one another together very badly um, as you three approach. Um, what are um, Zargo, Shariv, and Re Re Relan, what would you three like to do? I'd go and sing with the two guys. Okay. <laughs> Make a performance check. <laughs> Make it a little better. That's a nine. Um, you, you know, you don't have lips, so you try to like sing as best as you can, but you basically sound as drunk. But they don't seem to mind it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. On par with them. I, I sit next to him and he's like, "Look, this is another example of what alcohol does. <laughs> <laughs> Makes them sing. That's good. Some of them sing. Some of them cry." Right. Let's go to Jazargo. Um, you're kind of like held back a bit at, with these lock cutters. Uh, what are you doing in this area? Um, further questioning them on my friend that we are looking for. Would you two happen to know where he was sleeping uh, his tent uh, residence in this place? W where would that be? Mm, his tent? Um, go ahead and make a persuasion check, actually. I do need you to make a check on that. Ooh. <sighs> What's my modifier? Math. Alright, uh, 17. 17? Um, he says, hmm, what are you planning on doing while you're in this tent? No, well, he's gone missing, hasn't he? So I need to look for anything in relation to him. Clues as to where he might have gone off to. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people miss a note or a boot prints in a different direction. Uh, investigation's quite a hard thing, isn't it? Especially mm. for you folk with your big axes and small brains. Hey, we don't appreciate that. You guys don't appreciate a friendly joke? I'm trying to make acquaintances with your friend. Looking for your friend. Well, obviously. the other guy says, well, that's not quite a funny joke, friend. 
no apologies. I've seen the misread the the not the room, the field. We are outside. Um, <laughs> uh, but where has his tent be? Thank you. They both look at each other. He says, "They one of them says it's right over there, next to where that guy is," and he gestures towards like this tent over here with this guy who seems to be going through the crates. It's right over there. You can find anything. But if we find out you steal shit from his tent, we're gonna come after you. I don't look like the type to steal, can I? I can't even lift up a pebble with these arms and I try to flex. That's a better joke for you. <laughs> they just chuckles and they're like, well, I hope you find Samuel. He owes me a drink. He lost a vet, so it'd be shamed if he couldn't fulfill it. All righty, thank you, folks. As I uh, start making my way over to the tent. All right, what's your passive perception? Passive perception. Oh my. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Um, as you are walking away, you hear like these two conversating, but this seems like to be in whispers, so you don't quite catch it. Um, you see a red guard seems to have a conversation with this other lock cutter. And it seemed to be exchanging war stories of sorts. Um, but what do you do at this instance? There's a guy over here who seemed to be looking through crates. And there's these two just sharing like a story. Continually minding my business, going towards the tent, I'm going to look inside, peek my head in. As you go towards the tent, this guy goes around the corner and says, Hey! And he goes around the corner and he's stupid drunk. You can see like he's half naked. He, he's only wearing like his underpants and like his top shirt. He says, "Where? What are you doing going in my tent?" Oh my friend! Oh, you, you get better back off, man! And he shoves you. Oh man, stumbling backwards. No, you seem to misunderstand. The commander called me over here to get you. Listen, you man. Leland, <laughs> Leland hey, you know what you needed? You need a pounding. And then he's like going towards you. Um. Sharev and Relin, you two are both hearing this, and you turn around and you see Zargo seem to be confronting with a weird drunk. What would you like to do? <laughs> I comment to uh, Sharev, oh look, another wonderful example of drunk, but we should go probably help our friend out. <laughs> Can I sub this one up? <laughs> we might have to, my man, we might have to. Alright, I'm going. Alright. And you go over there, and you see like he's getting drunk and the closer he just shoved Zargo. I. Oh. You don't. Well, is that is that one of those dino things? Hey, guard. He looks at the guard. Is that one of those like dino things? He says, oh, "No, Terry, that's a fucking lizard fool. How about you just crawl into your damn tent?" He's like, "No, I'll not crawl into my tent." He'll go over them. He'll just slap him across the face, and then he just falls over, completely passed out. And he says. He says, forgive Terry, he's one of the harder drunks to deal with. I apologize if he harmed you or anything like that. I wanted to subber him up. Hmm, well, you don't have to worry about subbering him up. I already did the job. Don't worry, if he acts like that again, I'll let you handle it. All right. And then he goes All back, right. sitting down. <laughs> Friend, what, what were you doing? But me, I'm just looking through a uh, lost man's tent. He, you know, he's lost. He had a tent. You, he, you could have let something in the tent that tells us where he was lost. All right, go in the tent, uh, Mister Red. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it is it drunk man tent there? Oh yeah, that's the drunk men's tent, yeah. He's the only resident. No one tends to bunk with him. Can I can I put him in his bed? Sure, as long as you don't eat him. Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm him. just kidding. <laughs> just a joke there, my friend. I, I won't eat him, don't worry. Alright. I'll keep an eye on him. Alright. So I'll get pick uh, up you pick up Terry. I will pick up Terry by the, the, the back of his uh, of his shirt and just Go and put him in one of the bed in the tent. Yep. Not, not really caring. Just throwing him there. You go in there and it's a mess. It's clearly someone who hasn't really kept to their tent. And this clearly is meant for like only one person. You put him right next to a nearby bedroll. 
<laughs> and he's like, oh, and he's like kicking in his sleep, but obviously you just avoid easily avoid it and you come back out. But other than that, you don't really see nothing of value. You don't see really any evidence. It seems like to be a drunk man's tent. Raven would like to go to the box that he was hanging out with around the corner of his tent. Sure. You go over there, and you see what seems like to be... Oh, my bad. Um, you go over to the crate over here, and you see that it has, like, small... Uh, it seems like to be a small keg of ale. It's like portable ale that you can carry all around you. And it seems like this is how he got drunk. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, can Raylan try and bring one of those keg of ale over to the guard to try and maybe uh, loosen his tongue with some alcohol? Uh, sure. You grab one. It's about the size of your head. Um, they... Quite a feat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Quite a feat for a small kenku. And you bring it over to him. He's like, oh, thank you. So, have you heard of anything about our uh, our friend Samuel? Uh, we were a little confused when uh, uh, he seemed that he just uh, apparently wandered off. He puts what seems like to be a tap, you know, the spout. He puts it in the side of the mini small keg, and then he pours it into his mug, and then he drinks it. It's like, ah, oh, that's some good ale. Oh, yeah, as far as Samuel, he left two days ago. He seemed to be... You know, joining another lockers camp, they were trying to clear up the rest of it there for a second camp so that we could get some more people out. Uh, this was like two days ago. They haven't really returned since. They should have been back here by, well, at this point. If they don't come in the morning, we'll go look for them, for sure. Does Samuel have any uh, other friends or maybe enemies like our friend, uh, our drunken friend in the tent over there? Oh, Terry, he's always a drunk. Sometimes, <laughs> this one story, when Samuel first joined... He was told that he was going to bunk with Terry, and something similar happened sort of to your friend over there. You know, it's like usually a joke that lock cutters do to one another. And Zargo, as soon as you hear that, you look over to these two lock cutters, and they're just chuckling to themselves a bit. Uh, ignoring the log cutters that are chuckling at me, I'm going to intrude myself into this uh, Kenku's and guards conversation. Uh, you said they were gone, um, two days ago. Did they bring any rations with them? Food, water? Oh, of course. Oh, they should. Oh. Yeah, they brought yeah. enough rations for sure. So as far as starving, they shouldn't have an issue. Plus, some of the guard is there too, and some of them are experienced in hunting. So, as far as food-wise, they should be okay. All right. Just needed to know if it was less of a save and more of a recovery mission. All right. So while that's going on, uh, the rest of the party goes towards the, what seems like to be the dock, the dock. Um, seems like they go to the luck cutter's boss, and it seems like he's, like, talking with them. These three are leaning up against the log, while this one is kind of standing, telling a story, and he, he turns around, and he sees you, he's like, ah, oh, seems like you're one of the visitors in the camp. Uh, how can I help you three? Uh, well, basically, we're just here doing, um, a favor for Samuel's wife. We're trying to find him. You know where the fuck he's at? Well, quite, you got quite a tongue there, miss. Yes. Hmm. But... Well, Samuel went more east, Samuel's group went more eastward in this general direction. He points to the direction, which is this way. And he says, they haven't been really back in two days. We were going to find them in the morning as a group just to make sure that they're right but if you wish to go on ahead you may be my guest but my men clearly and you see like he's gesturing to the rest of the camp some of them are drinking and some of them are like exhausted clearly we're not in no shape to go finding people at the moment yeah don't worry about it you've been working all day well if you are gonna go there just be aware there's some weird bugs that crawl out from the earth and they attack people who unsettle there Seems like every time we move into a certain area, it seems to pop out out of nowhere. Based on my experience as a veteran, it seems like they could hear movements from through the ground. It's weird. I've never seen, heard any creature like that. Only in stories, but not until like a day ago or so. Huh. You know how many there were? Hmm. 
Well, there was like two, but the guard and the lock cutters were able to easily dispatch of them. It seems like they were not they're not gargantuan, but they are they can be quite tall. We've heard that you're about three to six foot tall whenever you're talking one of the guards, so hmm. yeah, that's gargantuan that... for a bug at least. Yeah, that's the biggest I've seen, but nothing bigger than that. Surely you three and whoever's along with you can easily manage them. Uh, probably. Sure. Give me a second. Uh, and they kind of just uh, go looking around. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll go pick up any empty like beer bottles or ale bottles that people are drinking. Sure. You find one nearby. Uh, now I'm just looking for a lot. Okay. Uh, and I'll just like gather those up. Uh, if they're hunting from down, we just make a lot of sound. It, they'll probably not fuck with us because it'll sound like there's more of us than there are. So I'll just uh, take a bunch of glass bottles and just put some pebbles in them uh, and then close them up and then uh, start tying them with some rope. The... I see your plan, but I think maybe instead of them not, as you said, fucking with us, they could instead bring more of these export tall bugs. Or for one, don't think it's up to test at our current situation. The lock cutter captain steps in and says, Your orc friend is right. However, I would just do it a lot more quietly. If you guys are quiet enough, maybe you won't attract them. Because carrying I kinda, mugs full of rocks tends to draw in a lot of attention. I kind of point to myself in my like heavy, rusted armor, shield and spear, and my like, just clanky walking appearance. <laughs> Not stealthy. What we would yeah. do is, um, instead of putting those with us to make ourselves some figures, we throw them somewhere else instead. And have them sure. go there instead of us. Do the I could. Use. Well, if we, uh, I'll keep them in my backpack covered in cloth for now, but we'll hang them up in the trees, uh, just to give some distraction. The captain interjects and says, <laughs> if, there, if you see any trees, we cut down most of them. You could probably put them near oh. stumps or what have you. Ah, that'll do. Well, or something to keep them off the ground. Alright, well, if you're gonna go out, well, just make sure that you're, you stay safe, and worst comes to worst, we'll just, if you don't make it back, we'll probably find you in the morning. Hopefully alive. I hope so, too. Well, good luck. And then he goes back right, to his men, continuing to have some conversation. I'll go get the other Chuckle Fox. All right. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hypothetically, instead of throwing bottles, how about we just send those three forward? Just saying, money splits a lot better three ways. <laughs> uh... Oh, Money yeah. does split a lot better three ways, but people tend to stay alive in bigger groups. Don't get greedy now. Uh, yeah, greed, no, my I... last name, <laughs> or middle name, whatever the saying is. <laughs> I agree on not sacrificing our comrades that early, at least. Also, uh, the little one holds the torch for me, so kind of need him. <laughs> you definitely keep the little one. I like him. <laughs> All, right. All right, I'll go get the chocolate of course. All right. I'm everyone's. <laughs> all right. So you got you go up to the group and you see that the seems like all of them are listening to the story of the Red Guard about how he he accidentally woke up a orc him and his men and they were just running for their lives and eventually they were able to trick the orc by basically going to the swamp, and then he finishes his story, says, and then he went to the swamp face first down into the ground, and you should have seen him. He was going like, oh, my, where are you? And we were just having a chuckle, but that was a good day to be alive right there. <laughs> oh, hello, miss. Um, it seems like these are your friends, I presume? Yep, I'm gathering up. We're heading out. Come uh -huh. on, guys. We're going to eat things? Uh, yes. Also, here, hold these bottles. <laughs> bottles? Yeah, I'd give it to the big boy. Why is, why is there stone in there? To make noise, so that way the things want to fight you. You're the strongest. Can I, can, can I put water? 
Uh, you can after we get the boy. Okay. I'll just... I, I'll just throw the bottles in my backpack. <laughs> not, uh, no, not thinking just, much. Okay. Yeah, I just... It's kind of like a necklace of just bottles that clink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so just put it around your neck. I'm like, all right, come on. All righty. Okay. We're going to focus on you, so have fun. Oh, I'm the bait. I'm good at being the bait. Oh, the music stopped. I will continue. I believe in you, buddy. Sorry, chat. Give me one sec. Oh, nope. That's the Twitch one. Uh, you guys can continue while I do this. Yeah. But I notice um, our boy over here. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Jazargo? Hey, come on. We need you too. Unless you don't want to get paid. Well, yes, I'll be coming. One moment. As I start heading on my way. You know, I thought we weren't doing the whole bait thing. I don't think that's right. I conjured him. People were baiting. Well, I'm gonna stand next to him. He's not gonna be by himself, it. and that he's been made fully aware. Sorry, stream. No, I am one of those then. I, I can't live with myself having people go in my stead of danger. Ah, uh, totally good, but don't worry. I, like, I he's was a really boy. good. He can handle I, it. I was really good in the swamp to be the bait for the Bollywoods. Is it because you're purple and the swamp is green? Exactly. If you say so, I'm just... I don't want just to be a one-sided thing, is all. I do the same kind of any of you. He's alright with it. That's all that's yeah. gotta be said. Alright. <laughs> as long as they're not attacking us. He says under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, look, if you really want to, you can flank him on the left side, so that way we can be lefty-righty on him. That would be more preferable. Rather not have him out himself. All right. You Don't got... worry. I, I have my big stick. They'll be all right. All right. I trust you. You guys eventually head out um, with torches in hand. Oh, dude, that's a big crow. <laughs> um, but you guys, <laughs> you guys continued the path in which direction. And as you guys, you see like a bunch of cut trees with nothing but their stumps. And amongst these stumps, you do see what seems like to be burrow holes. Holes in which it seems like to be creatures who travel by digging through, would tra traverse through. I'm going to kind of hold my spear up, like, over my shield and point it down to the dirt, walking. So uh, whenever something pops up, I'm just going to fucking stab it. Sure. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ready my uh, quarterstaff, kind of. Make sure if anything does pop up. Alrighty. Right. They said it was this but way, I'll try right? And roll for All right. I have stealth. I don't know if I can roll for it. Hopefully it'll be good. Sure, you can roll for it. 25. 25. You are as light as a feather, best to your knowledge. Benefits of being small. Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah. You guys can move if you wish. Yeah, just walk them full with uh, bait boy. Uh, can I roll a uh, investigation on the uh, burrow for claw marks? How big these creatures are? How sharp their claws are, if any at all? Sure. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Alrighty. Sticking nearby. Yep. You see Zargo investigating the burrow right. holes. That's a seven. You aren't too sure. You haven't seen anything like it. What you thinking about these, your hoes? It's definitely peculiar. Weird, in a sense. Can't wait to see them. Or not see them after you <laughs> die, depending on how loud you are. I myself am quite the feather, as you can see, light. <laughs> but yeah. I'll Jury. help if you need it. <laughs> as I, uh... I have, uh, Raylan has a thought for the rest of the group. Seeing that uh, these log cutters uh, have cut so many logs, uh, and uh, you said something about these guys hunting on sound. Now, my big lizard friend over here obviously has those wonderful bottles. But uh, should things go south, maybe uh, 
the thought of maybe standing on those logs so that they don't hear us rather than us walking? I don't know how standing on a log would prevent them from he hearing with solid all the way through. Could kind of keep us off the ground if they're only peered from the ground. At least stop them from more coming up. And, and, and you might have feather and I don't know if you can fly, but I for sure cannot jump from log to log. I'm too big for that. I mean, I could, I but I'd have to, like, keep running. And if I stop for a second, I'm falling my ass over. I probably could. I would like to mention that Pax Dirt makes a lot less noise than jumping on a piece of wood, especially if that wood burrows deep beneath the ground, shakes and all that. Fair enough. Just a thought. Remember, I am a bird, after all. Was that supposed okay. to be this bird? <laughs> <laughs> can, can I put what you? What I'm trying uh, to say on... plainly, my my friend, is that I may not be the smartest tool in the shed. Can, uh, can, so you're can not I put like you what? on my shoulder so I can be just like Marina? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I I put the little Kenku on my shoulders. Okay, you do uh, you do so, assuming he allows it. <laughs> All right. I will. I I will. I will allow it. He's a good friend. All right. Uh, <laughs> Feels like I'm missing out now. Don't worry, oh, there's enough for me for you too, buddy. Yeah, I'm not getting you on my shoulders. <laughs> my upper stand. Little man, <laughs> don't stay behind. You'll be stuck. I'm not trying to be the bird in this situation. <laughs> you want me on your shoulders? <laughs> sure, big guy, sure. You guys, as you guys are talking, you guys hear some commotion going on more eastward, like towards this general direction. And you guys hear weird bug sounds that echo. Alright, I start moving forward, Spear, at the ready. That does not sound good. Also moving forward, free to protect. Uh, Alright. Okay. Let me get my big stick out. Alrighty. I have my crossbow ready. Okay. Right. Little bell, get get on this stump here. All right. As you, you guys rush over, you do see there is some light at the distance. Seems there to be dropped torches, and when you go over to this area, you do see what seems like to be someone that is that of Abigail's description of Samuel over at the distance, um, right around this area. Seems to be engaging with some of the red guard and some of the lock cutters. These weird bug creatures they stand about their heights and they all have piercers around their mouths they all seem to have like claws such as that of a lobster and they seem to be brown and covered in dirt however the light in the torches are, like disorients like their actual true colors and while all this commotion is going on, all of a sudden you hear some rumbling in the distance and around this big burrow over here you see something big that is 10 feet tall a larger version of of this creature appears at the distance and everyone around here is shocked and while you guys are trying to get sense of the scene you do see a man that fits Abigail's description right over here with the red guard and it is at this point that we are going to cut to commercial break or take a short break and when we come back we're going to be rolling initiative so stay tuned all right, all right. I'm going to go feed my cats then. You could go do that. <laughs> I got to let my dog out of the room anyway. So we'll be back in a few minutes.
and welcome back. We are back for some combat. Now, I must ask you all to roll initiative. I have to roll right. Um, where's that button? Oh, 13 that's for crit. 14. Where? Oh, there it is. Oh, no, Three! Oh, let's go! Three, yes. Let's go! Jizadgo gets an 18. Oh! He's just getting it. Yeah, 18. I need to double check myself. Oh, no. Is this map to scale? This map is kind of to scale, so I'll let you know how far you can get or how not far you can get. Um, oh, that's, a, that's a big distance. Yeah. A whole two turns to get over there. Ooh -wee. To get to a dude, it's like. Uh, Cray, what'd you roll? Uh, 13. 13. Wildfire? Wildfire. Uh, 6. Oof. Charis? Right, I'm... 3. <laughs> Raylan? 14. Okay. Marina? Also 3. Okay. Between Charis and Marina, which one of you would like to go first? Uh, he has the higher dexterity, so he can have it. Alrighty. Fair enough. Did you get Jazard goes? Yes, I did. Okay. Right. I, I... Everyone's initiatives here real quick. One second stream. Fudge rules and make them all one. That's fine. Alright. Let's play. Alrighty. So, first on initiative, Jazardigo, you see these weird bug creatures, and they seem to be interesting looking. However, there's this one big one in the corner that just popped up that seems to be the most dangerous out of all of them. What would you like to do? Jazardigo? Uh oh, what happened to him? Did he leave? No, he's here. Someone left. Is your mic muted again? Apologies, somebody came in. Okay. So, sorry, could you repeat that? Um, what would you like to do? You're first on initiative, as I fix everything. All right, yes. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, since there's there's only a distance, um, first off, I'm going to take my, uh, you know, first turn to, first thing, the action, not action, the move action to move. All the way, where am I at? I can't see myself that way. Alright. Uh, it's 30 feet. That's my walk. Just move everyone's cams real quick. Since everyone changed their names in the Discord. But it's just an easy fix. Okay. And then I just gotta crop. I gotta change this a bit. So I'll be changing this while your comment's going. So you can move your token and stuff. So while I do all this. Alright, yeah. About right there is 30 feet, which is my, you know, distance. And I would like to um, look at these things. You said they kind of look like, uh, like crab arms. Um, right? Uh, basically, they have, like, large piercers and what have you. Long piercers. Can I use, uh, I don't know what role this would be, but, uh, kind of a compare contrast to actual animals. See if it would have a weak point at the joints, maybe. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check. This will be your free check for uh, your round. Everyone gets one free check. If you decide to make another check, that will take up your action. Real life editing on stream while all this is going on. <laughs> impressive, impressive. Uh, perception, you said? Yes. There you go. All right. It's all fixed now. Uh, 15 on perception. 15 on perception. Um, uh, let me just look at the creature stats. Um, you see that as far as weak points is considered, you see that like the legs, the multiple legs it's standing on. Um, not to say that they are bigger or smaller or what have you, but for the most part, they seem to be. You do know that these are birds just based on the nature that what you see. So you're assuming that messing with the claws could probably mess up with their movement a bit and maybe the way they attack, but you have yet to see them attack yet. Alright. Um, now with my action, as I'm not close enough, I would like to dash. I'm pretty sure that doubles my movement. Yep, so, so that'll take up your action feet. once more. So go right mm -hmm. ahead. 
Alright. Um. Actually, before I do that, just quickly turn around to the group. Guys might want to attack the joints on the arms. They look rather vulnerable. <laughs> As I continue to, you know, dash my 30 feet. Alrighty. <laughs> All right, you move to the action as he says this. Um, meanwhile, speaking of action, the lock cutters and the red guard are going to all take swings. And they successfully hit. So all of them do one hit to each of these big creatures. And as they take a swing, it seems like part of the creature's exoskeleton like shells off. And creature goes... <laughs> like, ferociously. Basically, thank you. I can't do bug sounds. They're, they're, like, they're like, damn, we're getting unmatched. So we'll focus on that big one over there. They're like, shit, what are we going to do? And then these creatures... Fall back, you idiots. These creatures will get to go. These creatures nearby will each do one attack. And how I do multi-attack for the new people is I just make one roll. And they all do the same damage. Since this is each on individual ones, they'll each do the same amount of damage. To each one of them. Uh, let me roll some d6 die here. Alright. You see the way they attack, they raise their pincers and then they just kind of slap him with their pincers. And as they do, um, it damages um, the guards enough to where like it's some cuts, but nothing major. It damages Samuel majorly because he's not wearing any armor. And then it damages majorly the log cutters and minorly the guard. And then this big one is going to see, it's going to come over here and kind of like survey the area a bit. It's a cock die for me. I got to reroll. Um, yeah, it will go over here. And you see some like green bubbles foam at like where the mouth meets the pincers. And it'll spray acid on all three of these guys. Over here, they have to make a dexterity save. Cocked. Oof. They do, do not make it. So you just, these acid is sprayed on them. The lock cutters are covered in acid. They're like, ah, oh, it burns. Ah. Oh! And then they all collapse to the ground, dead, as I remove them from the board. Keep in mind, these are just log cutters, and they're not skilled fighters. And I'll just put their the skull token over here somewhere. Here it is. This is why I told you to run. Damn, my boy. And then the log cut, the guard will take some brunt of the damage. You think one good hit might do him in, but he looks pretty hurt due to the acid attack. Um, next it is Relin. What would you like to do? You see this at a distance. You see this big one spray acid on the lock cutters, and they seem to be melted and died. So what would you like to do? Well, Raylan at the side of that has a full body uh, shake, him, and you see his feathers uh, ruffle, and it's like, oh, that's nasty. Um, <laughs> is, Raylan still, uh, is Raylan still in stealth? Um, I would say at the moment, no. I would say at the moment, no, because you were at a different area than this. Okay, well, Raylan uh, would like... Uh, so there's a free action? Um, to make a check, yes. Yes. Um, so uh, Raylan would like to try and go into stealth again. Okay, so that would take... Uh, we are a level one rogue, right? Yes. So do you get cunning action or no? Not to level two. Not to level two, yes. Uh, so as far as like you yeah. physically stealthing around... That would take mm -hmm. up your action to hide. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, when you level, you get cunning action. For your free check, what I meant is like you could look around or you could look at the creature and study its weaknesses, that type of thing. But you, the actual act of hiding, will take up your action. Okay, then um, I will not be doing that. Then um, I will be... So my movement is 30. So let me see where I can move from there. I will move to this log. One second. That is my movement. Okay. And uh, am I, uh, can I attack? Sure. If what are you attacking with? I have a crossbow. I'm trying to see if it's 80 feet. It the this 
one right over here is 70 feet away. Oops. I yeah, so you could basically yeah. get all three of the small ones here and the big one, but you will yes. not be able to reach the other ones. Yes. Um, I would like to attack the small one that is uh, harassing our guard so that hopefully we can have more bodies for meat shields. <laughs> okay. Make an attack roll. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry. Oh. Okay. 17. 17 will hit. Roll damage. 7. 7 damage. You shoot your cross bolts at the creature, and you see that the creature takes it right in its chest area, piercing through the exoskeleton. And the creature goes. <laughs> the guard turns around and says. Guys, guys, I think we got backup. Um, do you guys wish to fight or do you guys wish to run? I'm fine with either way. You motherfuckers, run <laughs> all back. <laughs> all right, you say this. All righty. Um, that will be Relin's turn. Um, Craig, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Um, all right. Uh, so I'm going to have Craig move the most he can about. Yeah, so that one. I'm gonna have him use his thing to kind of just go forward to a thing. I think that's 30 feet. Yep. And I think I have enough. Sp I think I have barely enough space to throw a dart at the most bottom one of these bug things. What is the range of your dart? Uh, it says 20 to 60. Uh, yeah, you could get the bottom two for sure. They're the ones you would roll at disadvantage. But you could get either the one that the guard's engaging or the one beneath it. Uh, I'll do the one that the guard's engaging then. Okay, so this one. All right, make your attack roll, sir. As you pull a dart and you toss it. I get 18. That hits. Roll your damage. Five. Five. You throw your dart with precision accuracy and landed right into the eye of one of these creatures. And the creature goes... Ah, ah as it's like clawing its face a bit trying to, re to remove the dart it seems like this one's on its last legs the one in the middle no oh. that would be my turn then all right wildfire you are up all right wildfire is gonna look at the group and then uh nonchalant to say well you guys have fun dealing with the bow and knife beetles i'm gonna be over here he's gonna walk <laughs> past Move 30 feet next to his uh, bird friend and unsling his own crossbow and just look down and say, Hey, me too! And he's going <laughs> to fire at the... Uh, whatever this is. Okay. Attacking Samuel since that's his mission. All right, what's the range on your crossbow again? I'm sorry. The heavy crossbow, so it's 100 feet. Oh, you're fine. You got. You can hit okay. any of these, so... That's going to be a 23 to hit. 23 does indeed hit. Roll your damage. That's going to be 10 damage. 10 damage you deal to the creature. You shoot it, and it pierces right in its chest area through the exoskeleton. And the creature goes... <laughs> and just trying to sling at the crossbow bolts. And this one looks like it's on its last legs as well. It seems. That's a side shot. <laughs> Partner. All right. Shariv, you are up. I'd simply do a dash action. Okay, so you can move okay. twice, so. Yeah, so it should be about there. Alrighty. And I, I'll just start shouting, The big one is mine! <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right, Marina, you are up. Alright, so I'm using the tool, and it says this is about 60 feet. I don't know if that's accurate, but that's what it's telling me. So I'm going to move here and tell me if I shouldn't be here. All right. You're moving a full 60 feet? Yes. Okay. Uh, yep. That is full 60 feet. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that is the free check for this round. Can I uh, smash uh, my shield with my spear and scream out at the insects like in this area in front of me to try to get their attention focused on me? Um, I would say as far as your free action, no, because you're intentionally trying to distract. Um, but you could try to intimidate if you tried to do yeah, so. Yeah, that's what I meant. 
Oh, the, sure. Like, make an yeah. intimidation uh, check. Yeah, yeet. Uh, oh, natural one, so don't worry about it. <laughs> they don't seem intimidated. These are insectoids, so they seem to be focusing on other things. Uh, I was just trying to get them to hit me. <laughs> I understand. Alrighty. All right. Chop of Fair initiative. Jazargo, it is your turn. It seems like these critters are about to swing once more in a second. What would you like to do? Um, I want to uh, free roll. How good is our uh, mission? How good is uh, what? His health. Uh, how good is uh, Orange Beard's health? Uh, uh, what does he look like? You know. Make a medicine check. Medicine check. All right. Eleven. Eleven. Um, he's not looking quite well. One hit will probably get him down. All right. Down or dead? Like dead. These are NPCs, okay. so. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Not like I, we have know... a healing magic on us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh. All right. Uh, moving up to there. Give me a moment. So right here, I think. That's my thirty. I'm going to cast a healing word. On the ginger, one d four plus one. All right. What's your healing word? What is the actual word you say? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Putting you on the spot here. <laughs> Heal. Heal. That's a great healing. That word. Works. All right. <laughs> go. Go ahead and roll hit points for him. D and D Beyond is slow. That's fine. Fight used to be. He gets like, healed up. Some of his wound heals up. Yeah, buddy. So. Yeah. Alrighty. Let's go. Anything else you would like to do, Jazargo, while you do rolling for dice? <sighs> that was a bonus action, so yep. I so can. Uh, so you still attack. have your action. Yep. All right. I do have my action. Yes. Uh, frostbite. On the Ooh. one attacking it. Uh, him, Ginger. Alrighty, what does your frostbite look like? Um, I kind of raise my hand up, and from my palm, it seems to glow like a faint blue as an icicle seems to form out of it, uh, kind of pointing itself up before suddenly just kind of shooting out at a very fast speed. Alright, you see Zargo's hand wave, and some blue magic appears from it, and all of a sudden, the creature in front of Samuel starts to shake up a bit. I have to make a save for this one, right? Uh, yep. Con 11. Alright. They will succeed with a 19. Does that do anything? Uh, I don't believe so. Oh. I mean, I, I miss. I mean... Oh, it's a save that sucks, though. Okay. I see how it is. <laughs> Alrighty. So, you tried to do your magical effect, however... Your new magics that you have for him seems to not have take hold yet. It seems to have no effect on the creature. This is the first time you guys see uh, Jazargo do anything magical. You thought this was a regular dude, but it seems like he has some magic up on his sleeve. Oh, you're a salmon. That's good. <laughs> All right, that will be my turn. Alrighty. So the guards are like, crap, we got to get the hell out of here. And then... They will all disengage, and they will try to move as fast as they can. Um, what's 30 feet? So they can all... I'm going to go here. Samuel goes up to you guys and says, Who the hell are you guys? Man, I you can can shut the fuck up. Uh, all right. All right. And that's how far they can get based on their movement. And they spend their action to disengage from the area. So, uh, next, it's the creature's turn. Let me roll a d6 to see if the big one gets its acid attack back. Okay. You see, like, it's, like, sack underneath its mouth start to form this, like, green, mitt, green um, sack underneath its mouth. It'll go over here, and then let me see the distance of this cone here. Uh, 
Oh, it's a straight line. So let me get my tool here. Let's see here, straight line. Oh, I'm trying to figure out where to do this as far as. All right. That's the distance. And let me see how far away you need to be. Uh, and it's five feet wide. All right, so Jazargo, I do need you to make a dexterity saving throw. And I'll make one for the guards. Alrighty. Dexterity. All right, I'm good with that. Saving throw, though. Yeah. I'm still good with that. I believe in me, too. Don't worry. All right, that's a uh, 15. 15, you just succeed. You'll take half damage. Mm. Oh. The guards have failed, unfortunately. The guards will each take eight points of acid damage, and you will only take four. As it sprays its acidic breath towards the area, the two guards try to get their shields up in time. However, they are unable to do so as their arm starts to burn and their clothes begin to melt away and scream in pain. You, Jusargo, just barely managed to dodge out of the way before some of the, some of the acid hits a little bit on you, but not as much as the guards would. And then these creatures, let me check their movement speed. They will burrow. No, they won't burrow. They see their prey. So these guys will go over here. How much distance is that? Yeah, that's exactly 30 feet. All right. So these guys will form here. And then this guy will have to spend its entire turn just getting there. And then there's going to be two against you. Well, three. And I'll just make one attack roll for all six of them. Uh, let me check its stats. Does a 14 hit you, Jazargo, or you, uh, Mar Marina? No. no. Okay, good. You guys dodge multiple piercers out of the way, uh, luckily, from the attacks. All right, it is your turn, Relin. Seems like these creatures are ganging up on your allies. What would you like to do? Well, uh, Raylan again uh, gets disgusted when he sees all the acid going everywhere, so he shouts out to everyone, uh, actually especially right next to him, uh, we should probably target the big guy. Maybe we should try and uh, get the other little ones to scurry away. Uh, Barton. So he is going to stay a very nice healthy distance away and shoot with a short bow again. All right, make your attack roll. 24. 24 does hit. Roll your damage, and you do get your sneak attack. All right. So that's five uh, short bow damage, and then what's the thing with the sneak attack? Roll a d. Uh, it's a one d six additional. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right now you can only deal one d six of extra damage. So. And a four on top of that. Cool. So how much damage total? So uh, five from the short bow and four from the sneak attack. So nine. nine. Nice. Nine. You shoot at one of its shoulder blades or excuse me, uh, one of its shoulder blades and get air pierces through the exoskeleton and the big creature goes Aah! and it's loud and it echoes. Um, anything else you would like to do, Raylan? Uh, just in case, uh, you said it echoed, right? So yep. as a Kanku, I'm going to listen to the sounds of these bugs in case I need to know it in the future. Sure, you do so. Alrighty. Would you like to move, or would you are you comfortable where you are? I am comfortable where I am at the moment. Okay. Uh, Cray, it is your turn. You see a bunch of these large insectoids ganging up. What would you like to do? Alright. Uh, Cray's gonna just yell out, Come on, guys, I'm gonna walk in my there. Boy, there. Let's see. Make this again. I'm gonna have up there and I am going to use my quarter staff to attack them. Alright, make your attack. Oh, did the music stop? Yeah. Rip. Okay, I'll play it while you do your attack. Uh this is an eleven. An eleven let me see. An eleven 
for the little one does not hit, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, do I get the bonus action unarmed strike at least? Um, do you, do you have access to... Yes, you do get the bonus action to unarmed strike. And is with your okay. kick or punch or whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's take a, like a roundhouse kick at his missus. Yeah. Sorry, chat. I am playing the music uh, again. It's a nine does not hit. Nine does not hit. Nope. Alright. Uh, then that'll be my turn. Maybe a Cray will shout out. You guys gotta get out of here. You're surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> the guards is like, yeah, we're trying to do that. <laughs> That's for everyone. Um, That's for teammates and all. Wildfire, while I try to gain control over this music, what would you like to do? Wildfire's just gonna knock another arrow in his cr uh, crossbow, <laughs> aim and say, it was like she could be getting a lot more money for this. And he's gonna take a crack shot at the big guy. Big boy. All right, make your attack. <laughs> Oh my god, that's terrible. That's gonna be a nine. Oh no. Are you guys Maybe. hearing the music or no? Uh, nah. No? no. Oh. Okay, it doesn't want to cooperate with me anymore. It's all good. That's a shame. It's all good. Alrighty, let's... Yeah. Alrighty, so what's your attack roll? It's gonna be a nine, unfortunately. It misses. It goes right over it. Huh. Not that nice of a shot. <laughs> With... My turn. Alrighty. Uh, Sharif, what would you like to do? I'll just build a boat side by side with my monk friend here. Okay. Get out of my way, little one! As I smash one of them with my uh, big stick. Alright, which one? Or my mole. Which one? I think the middle one I, I shot earlier, so I think that one is the weaker one. Yeah, Am I this one is that? 18. 18 yeah, does one. hit. That's and a 9 damage. Alright, how would you like to kill it? Oh, I just want to smash his skull all the way down inside its body all right. as it falls to the ground. You do so with one big smack with your club. You just squash it to where its head caves into its body and it collapses. And you too, get out of my way! As I would like to use my bonus action to use my uh, ability Hungry Jaw. All right. The, uh, one here. All right, make your attack with your jaw. Will be a, no a nineteen. That hit. will hit. Roll your damage. For six damage. All right. How would you like to kill it? I would like to just bite its throat off and remove a chunk and let it fall to the ground. All right. As I as I just sw swallow the uh, chunk. Alrighty. As you go up and reach for its jugular, you rip it out with your teeth as a laser folk, and it's weird. <laughs> Greenish blood soaks you a little bit as it struggles to breathe and it collapses dead on the ground. Mm -hmm. Nice. Says, I knew that guy was hungry. All right. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, that is it. I'll just get my temporary health. Yeah. All right. All right. We're good. Marina, you're currently surrounded. What would you like to do? Uh, that's fine. I kind of like roll my shoulder. Uh, to get uh, Rufus up off of me and flying into the air so I can move a bit more free. And I'm going to take a stab at the one right above me sure. uh, with my spear and kind of hunker down uh, beneath my shield from the other two. All right. Go ahead and make my attack. Yeah, yeet. Nope, only... Wait, that was a damage roll, right? Or was that an attack roll? Cannot That's tell. A, that was your attack roll. Okay, only a seven. seven. Did not roll well. Does not hit. You try to get in position, but... You are getting a bit flustered with the amount of enemies surrounding you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll be it for me. Alrighty. Uh, Zargo, it is your turn. The big one's right in front of you that just recently sprayed some acid. What would you like to do? Um, knowing that these things are sensitive to sound or vibrations, I could assume that a loud noise and agitate them, maybe hurt their ears. Could I attempt that? 
How would you like to try to attempt that exactly? Make a loud noise. <laughs> okay. With my mouth. Make an intimidation yeah, check. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, as I'm rolling that, uh, an animal call uh, that I've learned living near the woods. Um, that of a wild boar. <clears throat> I need to add my modifier. What's the modifier? Hmm, what did you say? Intimidation. Yes. Yeah, intimidation. All right. That is a sixteen. Sixteen and intimidation. Interesting. Um, they this, seem. Um, Go ahead. I want to roar at it in character. <laughs> All right, you roar at it. It seems to bother bother its ears a bit, but not enough to like to be discouraged. Bother its ears a little bit. All right. I'm editing cameras on. on the fly while I'm also doing this. So. <laughs> Alrighty. Alright, stream. Then we're having some of the bot leaves. I'm simply just going to scimitar it then. Um, All right. Scimitar the big one? The big one, yes. All righty. That Make... is 1d6 plus 4. Where's my d? There it is. Right. Well, roll to see if you hit. That's a good point. <laughs> Probably Thank a good you. idea. Let's try. Yeah. All right. Does a 13 hit? A 13... You're facing the big one or the little one? Big one. Does not hit, unfortunately. Ah, okay. Hmm. Alright, then a uh, bonus action to heal myself. Alright, bonus action heal. <laughs> heal? <laughs> I kind of say giggling to myself as I've just missed my scimitar attack. Samuel says yeah, that your friend is quite weird. Alright. Two plus one, that's three. Alright. All right. All righty. Next. That will be my turn. All right. Okay. I fixed the cameras again. Twice. And I'm getting better at this. So <laughs> the men are like, you know what? Screw running. Let's try to take them on. And these guys will go over here and we'll try. This one will attack with the small one while these other two will attack the big one. Just gonna move for space wise. Sam was like, fuck this, I'm getting the hell out of here. And he'll just spend his turn basically dashing up to here. And yeah. the guards will all attack. Will they hit? That's cocked. They will hit with a 15. Mm. Dealing with their axes, which is a D8. Dealing seven points of damage, killing one of the small ones. Nice. And both nice. of these guys dealing total 14 damage to the big one. Not a big fan of that. Alright. The mama seems to be uh, taking quite some damage. Um, this small one will attack you, Zargo. Uh, I gotta see if that hits. Um, does a... Does a 13 hit? No. No? Very good, very good. All right. The big one, let me see if it gets his acid breath back. It does not. Um, it will make two attacks against the guards. A 16 and a 18 will slice at these two guards. Going, ah! Ugh! <sighs> I think we should have turned back. These two guards are looking pretty hurt. Um... These two are going to attack you, uh, Marina. I'll just make Go one attack it. roll for each of them. Uh, does a 16 hit? Nope. All right. You, no, it does not. You pull up your shield, and you block the barrage attacks against you. Uh, Raylan, you see this at the distance. What would you like to do? Raylan would like to shoot at the big mama again. All right. Make your attack. Sixteen. Sixteen will hit. Roll damage. And you get sneak attack. And then nine with the short bow, and then a six with the sneak attack. So fifteen damage. Damn. How would you like to kill it? <laughs> uh I would like to kill it by saying, 
uh, by looking at my friend right here. He's like, check this. And then I shoot it, <laughs> and then I scream uh, with the mimicry, the big, big sound imitating it. Not, I'm not going to mimic it. I'm just be like, check this out, and I just shoot it like no look. Nice. You shoot it, and it shoots right at the acid uh, sack. And as it does, the acid leaks out, pouring acid all over the creature. And as it does, it begins to melt out of its own acid gland as it crumples to the ground dead. Now that was a nice shot. <laughs> that was <Thank> mine! <laughs> Sorry, big man. I'll get, let you have the next one. Alrighty. Out here to own them. Would you like Man. to? Would you like to move? Anything else like that? I am staying right where I am. All right. I like my stump. Cray, what would you like to do? Uh, Cray's just gonna move over to this little guy. We're taking another swing with the quarterstaff, hoping to hit. All right, make your attack. Eleven again. Eleven does not hit, unfortunately. This creature right. seems to avoid your attacks. Quite seamlessly at that. Uh, I'm gonna try again with the unarmed strike. Go ahead. All right, nineteen. Not on two. That does hit. All right. All right, fine. And six damage. Is this a kick or a punch? It is a kick. Another roundhouse. All right, you do a roundhouse kick, and as it does, you kick its head off. Yeah. We'll get about one of them now. Looks better. Alrighty. Wildfire, it's your turn. Seems to be only two left. Gonna aim at either one of them and then uh, take a shot. Alrighty. No witty banter this time. It's gonna Upstate. be a 24. How much? 24. That definitely hits. <laughs> Eight damage. All right. You shoot your heavy crossbow bolt into the head of one of them, killing it instantly. Yeah, wasn't nearly as nice, but... All righty. Next, Shariv. What would you like to do? Seems to be one left. Fire them. Don't like the orange beard. Go too far away. <laughs> Should be able to just move in between these and get up there. Okay. And I'll just uh, hit it with my uh, with my big stick. All right. Make your attack. Try to hit it with your big stick. This is a natural one. Oof. Um. You s you are so pumped and you're gonna swing with your big stick. You hit right next to it. <laughs> Missing it completely. <clears throat> Alrighty. That, that'll be my turn. Marina, what would you like to do? I would like to simply stab the motherfucker. Alright. Hopefully, I can hit. Let's see. Yeah, ye. Uh, only an 11. <laughs> That's rough. That's rough. Yeah. You try to swing, but the bug is still kind of intimidated to you. All right, Zargo, there's only one I'll, bug I'll just, left. I'll just move around to give someone else. Like, sure. <laughs> Zargo, there's only one thing left. What would you like to do? <laughs> um, I'm going to run up. Not Kind of like a jog. It's not very, you know, um, important to me at this point. I'm not in a much of a rush. So kind of like a half jog. Uh, I get over there relatively quick, not too big of a jog, and uh, once again, I'm going to scimitar it. All right. um, I'm going to aim for, you know, just middle back of it. Sure. Kind of a nice central <laughs> spot. Sure. Roll to hit this time instead of rolling for damage, please. I swear, we miss. <laughs> All right. Uh, 11 plus my modifier, which I think is 6. Okay, you do hit. <laughs> um, 17, yeah. Yeah, you do hit, luckily. <laughs> the big stick doesn't hit. The swing doesn't hit from the fighter. Look, I, I am simply here to take attacks, and I did my job. Alright. 6 plus 4. Alright. 
four, five, six, seven damage. All right. How do you kill it? Mm -hmm. As I, I'm assumedly standing behind it, I just kind of, you know, ready my stance, just kind of jab it really good in the back. And after my thing pierces it, I lift up my blade upwards through the chest, past the head, essentially cutting him in half. All right. Pretty sharp blade. You do so. Its exoskeleton goes flying over you along with its green juices as it crumples to the ground, dead. Not much of an exoskeleton. Pretty, right. pretty bad and strong. <laughs> at this point, Weak. at this point, you see wildfire and uh, railing. You do see uh, Samuel just make it a blitz for it back towards the same direction you guys came back from. We're still getting paid, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Don't let them go too far. Hey, go hunt down that motherfucker. <laughs> gonna start chasing yeah. after yeah the guards oh, like sure. guards like let's just get the hell out of here and let's report back all right give yeah. me a second i want to break off one of the big pincers of these things uh sure you break off one of the pincers of the small ones very easily and you have a prince of, of one of these creatures it's brown and it's basically has multiple sharp points cool can i try to get a talent from the big one Sure, make a strength check. All right, I'm good at strength. Here, I'll I'll, I'll give you the help action. All right, so well, assist. So roll with advantage right. since someone's helping you out. All right. Uh, all right, I got seventeen on one and seven on the other. Yep. So with the seventeen, you're able to manage and pull apart with the help of uh, Marina. You are able to pull off one of its pincers. Oh, thank you. Nothing like a little trophy for the trouble. It's a little bit yeah, big. Well, uh, <laughs> so I was just running out of rations. Sure. Rufus, I'll... stop eating that man's eyeball, you motherfucker. You just see Rufus <laughs> pecking at the eyeball of one of the log cutters. Yeah, okay. I just kind of like pick him up. And the roof is just swallows like the eyeball and they just start walking away. <laughs> With... All right. Zargo or Sharif, would you like to do anything to the creatures? Um, yeah, actually, in a uh, small glass vial, um, I pour out some oil that I have on me. Don't need that. I'm going to take a uh, bit of acid into a small glass vial. All right, make a sleight of hand check. Mm, yeah. All right. As you try to get out the last of the acid from its acid gland. All right, sleight of hand, where's that? All right, that's a 13. 13? All right, you try, you get a little bit, but then the worst part is that you got some on your hand. You'll be taking only one point of acid damage, luckily. So you like, right. ah, but you have like a small vial of acid. You a good there, All right. Ah, yes, I'm better than good. This is intriguing, to say the least. But I need to catch up with those guards, treat their wounds right quick. Um, as I start to scurry, uh, trying to keep pace with the guards a little bit faster to catch up with them. All right. My God. All right. Uh, as for me, the, the one that I took a, ch a chunk of meat already off him, yeah. I'll just grab the whole body and start moving with the group with it. Okay, <laughs> you can <laughs> easily pick it up. Alrighty. Eventually, you guys all make it back to camp. <laughs> and then, if I recall, there were three guards. And then I'll place them on the board here. Um, here they are. A one, a two, a three. And then let me put Samuel here. Wait, where is he? There he is. Boom. All right, so the three guards go up to the captain and explain um, everything that will happen. Samuel, of course, goes up to you guys afterwards. He says, hello, brother. So who are you guys again? Your wife sent us to save your lucky ass. Oh, Abigail? Oh. Yeah. Well, I have been gone for quite some time. Uh, I I thank you. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm out of breath. 
Yeah, we take tips, by the way. So We started walking like 30 minutes ago. How are you still out of breath? Well, you weren't fighting those things. so I, I literally did. That's what we were doing. We were doing it for some time, actually. For some time. Have a girl offered you. Quite no, we don't. Oh, man. She's offering you the necklace, isn't she? Yeah, you know it. You're very good in necklace. That's for a corn. It's a nice, shiny thing. Mm. It asks, do you know any details about that necklace? I know I know. it means a lot to her. Um, oh, I have a question for you. What is it? Where did she get the necklace? According to her, she, what she told us. So what are you going to tell us? Yeah. She, it, she, it she, she got it from her grandmother. That's what she told me about it when I asked about it. But I know nothing more other than that. <sighs> Listen, if, if you want to talk, we could talk in the morning right now. I just want to get in my tent. I just want to sleep. All right. Well, I got to smoke this bug anyways. Oh, yeah. Bug, yeah. All right. I'll see you all in the morning. We could discuss more in the morning. And then he'll go into his tent nearby right here. <laughs> all right. Well, good saving you, I guess. All righty. And then at this point, the guard, after telling the captain, will resume positions right around here. We'll take watch for the night. And then the captain says, All right, everyone, it's time for everyone to get to bed. The guards will take extra careful paying attention here tonight. Um, so let's just try to rest up, and then afterwards we'll pack up and head back into town in the morning. All right. All righty. Um, I, got, I got a, you know, ten words for you, Captain. You said the most you've seen for that one was six foot for the bugs. We found a ten foot one, and I'm not too kind being taken a photo. Well, listen, I didn't know they could grow up to ten feet. The guards just told me about it. I was surprised that they saw it. All right, but it's just good to know that you didn't know about the size. Is this an issue? Yeah, no. Or just not a good surprise when we got there, and there's six of them, and then a big ten foot one coming out. Yeah, they usually come in groups, but I've never seen anything that tall. And it could spit some weird acid all over it. I'm surprised the guards are willing to stay up just to try to keep us safe. So you know it spit acid, but you didn't know the size. Is this one you fought before, or is this just... No, no, i never seen a creature like this. Again, they told me that it sprayed acid, and I've never seen one of the, these creatures do it. Alright, well... Keep it in mind, then. Alrighty, well, I do wish you a good night, and I'll be seeing you in the morning, I guess. And then he'll go, he'll go over to his tent. Yeah, sure. Um, I will have a good one there. Ready? Well, it's kind of Being stretching. Much. Do any it's of you of have a tent? Uh, I think I do. Alright, the lock cutters will all go into their individual tents for the night. I, a, I have a bed rule. Not exactly the same thing. Well, it's something to sleep on. Oh. Um, while they're doing that, Wildfire's gonna look down at his friend and say, Might have found shooting there, dead eye. He's gonna uh, run through his pack and then pull out some cuffs. Care to join me for a drink? Offering this to everybody, by the way. Yeah, fuck no. it. I should get a little edge oh, off. One, one, two, I also three. know where we can find some more uh, ale. Mm. I have work nice to little, do. Uh, there's a nice little box over here. I have work to do. I need to remove the the, the, the scale of that one. <laughs> As Charis just removes the scale from the body he got and starts to chunk the meat. So right. it, it tastes it tastes weird. It's it's like it's not lobster, but it does taste like selfish. But if it were to come from the ground, a little bit earthy. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'll man. Like, like I tell you, bugs are delicious. People just put their nose up to them. I'll go and uh, and give it to the guard too. I think they're too good for emotionally. No, so, uh, says Sh the wildfire. It, it it's a It never ceases to amaze me what that guy's willing to eat. Wrong with you, bugs. Once in a while, lizard folk. Alrighty. As you guys eat and wind down for the night, 
you guys all rest as the last of the campfires blow out and the guard keeps watch. And at this point, we are going to end the session. And we will all continue right. this two weeks from now. So I thank everyone for joining me and the rest of the players for this time around. We will be streaming again tomorrow with a third and final group. And then afterwards, we'll be streaming every other week, making this a true D&D campaign. So until then, viewers, I'll see you all next time. Take care.